Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of an unusual star known as Hypervelocity Star that seems to originate from somewhere in our galaxy where we didn't really expect it to come from. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Now what you've seen right here is a really awesome simulation uh, made from the data collected by the Gaia telescope and this simulation was created by the European Space Agency to kind of represent what uh, are all of the stars in the vicinity of our planet will actually look like or move to where they'll move to in the next few uh, millions of years. This is actually a super realistic simulation and it allows us to um, uh, not just track the stars and their future location, but also track unusual stars. And because of this data and because of this simulation, um, ESA was able to discover several really, really cool stars known as hypervelocity stars. And in this video right here, you're going to actually see um, some of these stars being tracked by Gaia Telescope. And uh, what's interesting is that their velocity suddenly changes dramatically, allowing them to escape our galaxy. And so we've discovered um, roughly around 30 of these stars so far. And for the most part, um, some of them are leaving our galaxy. For the most part, some of them are actually coming from the center of our galaxy. And that in itself allows us to explain their origin um, relatively easy. So here, for example, you can see that some of them are actually coming from other galaxies, but some of them are escaping our own galaxy, uh, coming from the regions of space where we know that they could have been kicked out by, for example, a supernova. Uh, if there are two stars and one of them goes supernova, it might get enough velocity to get kicked out. Or they might have gotten kicked out by the central supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star in the middle of the galaxy. But we've just discovered at least one of these unusual stars that seems to be escaping from a completely different region of galaxy where there's really nothing. There's no supernova there. There also seems to be no uh, supermassive black holes, suggesting that something really unusual kicked it out. Now we're going to use this relatively rough simulation um, in Universe Sandbox with the Milky Way being right here and the star that we discovered right here. So um, it's approximately, um, well, actually just over 40,000 light years away from our own planet and it's already quite far away from the Milky Way. And it's moving away from it at a speed of approximately 568 kilometers per second, uh, meaning that it's moving at uh, faster than the speed of stars that are um, inside the galaxy, approximately double the speed actually. Uh, I believe our own sun moves at just half of that, just over 280 kilometers per second. Now this star is known as Lemost HVS1, and um, it's a very interesting star, uh, even Ignoring the fact that it's moving so fast, it's interesting because it's somewhat sun-like, but a lot more massive. It's, um, I believe, about 8.3 masses of the sun, uh, which means that it's not going to live as long, but still, it's very sun-like, it's relatively young, and also very, very high in metallicity, higher than the sun. Now, if you don't know what metallicity means, it's essentially things that are not hydrogen, not helium, that are present in this star system. Now, what it usually refers to is how likely is this star going to have planets? Okay, not just planets, terrestrial planets. So terrestrial planets are made from stuff that's uh, metallic, that's not hydrogen, not helium. And because this particular star is higher in metallicity than our sun, there's a very high chance that it might actually have quite a lot of uh, rocky planets orbiting around it that are, well, similar to Earth, similar to Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Now, these rocky planets are currently very hypothetical, but their chance of existing and the fact that the star is very similar to our sun is actually pretty high. So for all we know, this particular star system might have um, its own little worlds with maybe even life there, and it gets to enjoy this beautiful view of the Milky Way from a distance. Now, what else do we know about the star? So we know it moves really fast. It's um, very similar to the sun, but more metallic. And to some extent, we know where it came from. And essentially, we know its origin in terms of the location, but we don't really know what made it go that fast. So we know that it came from a region that's not in the center here. It actually came from uh, one of the arms. And uh, if we try to trace this path and we try to see where it really came from, what we realize is that um, there seems to be nothing there but 
it's also a region that's covered by a lot of dust, so we don't really know exactly what's happening there. And so because of this, scientists started to speculate, so what could have given it this boost? Why is it moving so fast? We expect this to move that fast if there's a supernova or if there's a black hole. Very, very massive black hole. And so because of this, there are two main propositions now. First one is that maybe there is actually a globular cluster there, similar to, for example, this right here, M13. So these clusters are all over the place. There's actually a lot of them. They often contain a lot of stars, uh, thousands and millions of stars. And we believe that uh, many of them actually contain the elusive intermediate black holes. Um, so that could have actually been enough to kick the star out. If there is a globular cluster here, and if it has an intermediate black hole inside, it may have provided enough boost to give the star a velocity of 568 kilometers per second. But we don't really know this because we don't see it just yet. At the same time, um, if it was a smaller cluster, like for example, if it was actually just a few stars there, and they were really massive stars, um, more massive than eight masses of the sun, uh, possibly several dozens or even hundreds of masses of the sun, and if the star passed relatively close to them, it also may have had enough chance to get this slingshot maneuver and get boosted out of the galaxy. So in other words, if this particular star passed close to, let's just say, this star, it may have received enough velocity to get slingshot out of this uh, global cluster and then move really, really, really fast uh, across the skies out of the galaxy. So that's another potential explanation. If it passed by uh, many, many very massive stars, approximately 100 or even more masses of the sun. But once again, because we know that it actually came from this region right here, known as the Norma Arm, and we don't seem to see anything there, no global clusters as of yet, and also no any kind of black holes or supernova, we're still kind of in the dark about what really happened there. And so for this reason, this unusual sun-like star known as Lamost HVS1 is definitely one of the most curious objects we've discovered, uh, at least this year in 2019. It's probably going to be one of the most interesting hypervelocity stars in general, simply because we can't explain why it's moving that fast, but also because of the way that it's uh, very similar to the sun, relatively young, and of course, very, very high metallicity. We don't expect these stars to have such high metallicity, meaning that this star was produced after a supernova of a very massive star, and also potentially has many terrestrial planets there. So this could be a really cool object to actually take a look at in more detail one day. But unfortunately, since we don't really know much else about these hypervelocity stars, and because we've only discovered like 30 of them as of uh, today, with the first one only being discovered something like 14 years ago in 2005, um, this it's, by itself is already a pretty cool discovery. So these hypervelocity stars will hopefully one day uh, be a little bit more clear to us, we'll hopefully know a little bit more about them. But for now, uh, all we know is that there's a lot of these stars flying around the universe, coming in and leaving our galaxy at all times, and many of them came from galaxies really, really far away. And luckily for us, the Gaia mission that's tracking all of this and is making a really detailed map of nearby space will help us find more of these stars and hopefully help us explain their origin and of course the origin of the universe itself. For now though, I think uh, that's all I'm going to say in this video because there is unfortunately nothing else to add other than it's a cool discovery. On that note, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something more about the universe and of course about these unusual stars known as hypervelocity stars. And in the next few videos we're going to explore some other topics you may have not known about. So do subscribe if you still haven't and maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space through simulations and video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.